Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Flora, you can introduce me anytime. <clears throat> so thank you for that uh, and for your gracious words and for AECOM Tishman's partnership and commitment to building the New Jersey Windport the right way. I'm joined by a tremendous group of individuals who I will get to in just a moment, but it is a tremendous and a particular honor to welcome a friend to New Jersey, the Secretary of Labor, Marty Walsh. Marty, <laughs> great to have you. God bless you. <clears throat> Mr. Secretary, you have committed so much of your life and career to pursuing a stronger and fairer future for working families as head of the building trades in Boston, as a state representative, as mayor of Boston, and now in your federal role, you've stayed true to the men and women of organized labor. And I should say that on behalf of all of us in the Jersey side, in much the same way, New Jersey has stayed true to our union families. And here in South Jersey, the leg legacy of one of organized labor's earliest leaders and champions, Peter McGuire, is honored and upheld. And today, we're doing that legacy proud. I'm honored that we are joined by so many who have worked so hard to get the South Jersey wind port from drawing board to groundbreaking and whose continued efforts will see it rise. I must start with three tremendous champions for New Jersey's working families. The guy to my right, Congressman Donald Norcross. Donald. I might add himself an electrician. How many electricians in Congress? You're looking at them. I got to Another labor leader and great elected leader, Senate President Steve Sweeney. Steve, bless you. In whose district we find ourselves. And, of course, the president of the New Jersey State Building and Construction Trades Council, Bill Mullen. Bill, great to have you. And we will hear from them all in a few moments, and I would just say, Steve, to you, this is a particularly sweet day, given how long you've been at this one. So God bless you and thank you. We're also joined by Speaker of the General Assembly. Uh, Assembly. I got so excited I tripped it. <laughs> Assembly. Craig Coughlin's in the house. <laughs> Steve, your partner's in the 3rd District. Again, two guys who've been fighting for this for a long time. John Bersicelli and Adam Talaferro, both great Assembly persons. <laughs> Labor Committee Chair and another proud IBEW leader, Joe Egan, is in the house. Joe, God bless you. <laughs> Special Committee on Infrastructure and Natural Resources Chairman Rob Karabinchak is in the house. Rob, great to have you. And I also want to recognize the efforts of those across our administration. I'll start the, with the woman to my back to my left here, the Director of the new Governor's Office of Climate Action and the Green Economy, Jane Cohen, who we'll also hear from in a minute. I want to give a shout out to Evan Weiss, uh, our senior advisor for finance and major projects, and New Jersey Economic Development Authority CEO Tim Sullivan and his entire team. And that team worked tirelessly to get to today. And across the entire cabinet, there's a whole slate of folks who have put their departments and agency skin in the game to get the New Jersey Windport built as well. And several of them are here today. Uh, Secretary, Commissioner of Labor, rather, Rob Acero Angelo is in the house. Secretary of Higher Education, Dr. Brian Bridges, is with us. Board of Public Utilities President, Joe Fiorentaliso, is in the house. I don't know if the acting attorney general is here. I'm told he was coming. Is Andrew Bruck in the house? And Diane Gutierrez-Scacchetti could not be here, but wanted me to pass on her best wishes, Department of Transportation. Secretary Liz Moyo is in the house. Liz, thank you for that. I want to also thank and acknowledge, as a, as a group, Salem County officials and a collection of local mayors who are with us today, and I thank them for their great partnership. And I want, want to thank as well and welcome all the great leaders from across organized labor and the building trades, those from the clean energy advocacy arena, the business community as well who are with us. And I want to give a particular shout out to our friends from PSE&G, Ralph LaRosa, uh, Chief Operating Officer. Ralph, thank you. Eric Carr, who's the Chief Nuclear Officer, Rick Figpen are with us today, and thank you guys. So there were so many hoops to go through, and it's because of everyone I just mentioned and many others 
that we're able to make this more than $250 million investment needed to establish New Jersey as both the epicenter of the nation's offshore wind industry and the head of the offshore wind uh, supply chain, as this location will provide essential staging, assembly, and manufacturing activities related to offshore wind projects up and down, not just in Jersey, up and down the East Coast. For far too long, we've been fed a line that we could either create jobs or improve our environment and fight climate change, but not both. Today, I think we can finally put that old way of thinking to bed for good. What we're doing here today is not only going to create good jobs, overwhelmingly good union jobs, but it is going to be perhaps our greatest stand against climate change. New Jersey is going to change the narrative. Fighting climate change and creating good jobs do and must go hand in hand. And everyone here is helping us write this new narrative. <clears throat> a storm like Ida, which ravaged our state a week ago, I was mentioning both to Donald and Steve, it's a lot happier being with you guys today than it was a week ago in Mullica Hill where we were standing amidst the ruins of homes that have been crushed by those tornadoes. Um, that, that sort of reality may be part of our today, but we must do all that we can to prove our unwillingness to deny climate change, our desire to attack it head on, and our commitment to handing a more resilient tomorrow to the next generation of New Jerseyans. <laughs> Off <clears throat> Offshore wind energy is just one part of this effort, but it's a significant part. In New Jersey, we are already committed to creating nearly one quarter of the nation's offshore wind generation market, a major part of a cleaner and more resilient energy future. And today, we back that up with a 100% commitment to our working families to be a part of that future. When completed, the New Jersey wind port will eventually support up to 1,500 manufacturing, assembly, and operations jobs, in addition, by the way, to the hundreds of union construction jobs we're here today to celebrate. It will be an economic boon to South Jersey, but especially right here to Salem County. But before we create those jobs of tomorrow, we get to first create good, good paying jobs right here and right now, and that's what makes today even more exciting. We'll witness after a few speakers as Acom Tishman in the person of Alan Paul and the South Jersey Building Trades, represented by dear friend Dan Costner, president, will sign a project labor agreement that will see the wind port built overwhelmingly by union hands. We're going to make sure that the people who work here at every step of the construction process and from nearly every building trade, carpenters, concrete and masonry workers, dock builders, dredging contractors, Joe and others, electricians, Steve, iron workers, laborers, Greg Lalovey, good to see you, operating engineers, plumbers and pipe fitters, Kirk Kruger and company, teamsters, welders, and on down the line uh, that all of them make up this great state. On average, we expect roughly 200 workers on site every day. So in short, it is a win-win-win. It's a win for our economic future. It's a win in con our continuing fight for energy resilience and against climate change. And it's a win for workers and their families. And importantly, we are setting a higher bar for local engagement in the inclusion of historically disadvantaged businesses as part of the Windport's construction. And Flora alluded to this. We've set ambitious goals for 15% of the contract value to go to minority women and veteran-owned contractors and 25% to go to small businesses. And we're joined today by many of the members of the Windport's Local Engagement and Diversity Advisory Council, who have been working with the New Jersey Economic Development Authority over the past nine months to ensure we build this project in an equitable way. As I mentioned, the Windport isn't just about today. It's about our tomorrow. And one of the most important things on our to-do list is to ensure the workforce necessary for this project to succeed and for us to emerge not just as a regional or even national leader in offshore wind manufacturing and logistics, but as a global leader. And through the Secretary of Higher Education, Dr. Brian Bridges, again, Brian, thank you for being here for your leadership, along with the New Wind Institute, we initiated two challenge grants for community colleges to be the training grounds for these jobs. And there is a very important reason why we're looking to our community colleges in this effort. We want to ensure that we create the most diverse workforce possible. 
where barriers to entry can be eliminated and anyone who wants a future in the offshore wind in energy industry can succeed. That future workforce can be found in our community colleges. And through, amen, and through our community college opportunity grant program, the certifications and degrees needed for these jobs can be had tuition free for many students. So the first challenge, the offshore wind safety training challenge, will see a 1,700 square foot training center built on the campus of Atlantic Cape Community College to provide the world-class safety education that many of the jobs in the offshore wind sector require. And this will be truly world-class, set to meet or exceed internally industry-recognized standards. We are grateful to Atlantic Cape and all their partners and stakeholders. <clears throat> the second challenge, the New Jersey Wind Turbine Tech Training Challenge that rolls right off your tongue, <clears throat> will be awarded in the coming weeks and the ultimate prize of a grant of up to $1 million is still up for grabs. In this challenge, we're looking for a community college partner to work with industry stakeholders and our union labor partners to establish our state's first wind turbine technician training program. Very exciting. So with all of this, you can see why we are all so excited. The full range of possibilities for our future and our working families opens up before us. With our shovels in the ground in a few minutes, we're not just taking the initial step to building the nation's first purpose-built offshore wind manufacturing and logistics hub. We're not just breaking ground in good-paying union jobs. We're not just breaking ground in a clean energy future with all the economic and environmentals, uh, environmental benefits that will come with it. We are literally breaking ground on the very future of our state. And this is a tremendous cause for celebration. And to think it's just going to take a few signatures to turn this vision into a reality. But as honored as I am to be here, I am equally honored and privileged to welcome to New Jersey a tremendous champion for our working families, someone who understands that our collective future is held in the hands of union women and men. Please help me welcome the Secretary of Labor, Dor Dorchester's own, Marty Walsh. Thanks, I don't work that in. I love it. I love it. Thank you, buddy.